Hey guys, um, this will be the second last video for optical cavity. Uh, I'm going to just open the door and try and see if that improves this echo. Might be a bit better, kind of. If I face this way, I think it's better. Yeah. So, so far, uh, what have we done? We have measured the beam's um, spot size at a number of distances and then fit that, um, fit each of those measurements to get the spot size and then fit that to find the waste of the laser. Once we find the waste of the Gaussian beam from the laser, uh, we can compute where we need to put our lens from that, like how far from the laser waste, given the waist size and location of our optical cavity. Right? So we're matching this mode output from the laser to the mode that we want to excite in the optical cavity, all right? which is the TEM00 mode spot mode, uh, the Gaussian mode. So we've done that and now you should have worked out a distance from the lens that needs to get to a certain position within our cavity. So we've got to kind of arrange these mirrors so that the beam evolves to the right size and rates of curvature at the right location. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Um, so I have a number in my head that is from that needs to come from here to the um, right part of the cavity, which you should have found is the middle of the cavity, because both the mirrors, the input mirror, which is this one with the mark with the tape. Um, both of these cavity mirrors have the same radius of curvature. So the mode that it can host is going to have its waist in the very middle and then evolve to the same curvature at the mirrors. And that radius of curvature is going to be the same. The beam radius of curvature from the expanding Gaussian beam is going to match the cavity mirrors, which means that it'll, it will get focused back to it will evolve the it will essentially evolve back into the same waist and be refocused periodically. If the radius of curvatures didn't match, then it would evolve in some it could get focused to a smaller beam on the way back, or it could diverge depending on the curvature. Um, so we've essentially designed it so that it's just so, so that it should, in theory be refocused many times and that gives us more power buildup inside the cavity which means our cavity has a higher finesse so I'm just checking the number right. so now this is what you would have done if you were doing the lab you would have had to do all this boring stuff, which is definitely always part of experiments. Can't get away from this kind of monotonous things. Um, so, one thing you'll notice is that I've got two mirrors before I get to the cavity. Okay. Now, the thing is that you know we've we've designed the distances so that the beam evolved to the right size at the right time, at the right space, point in space. But we haven't accounted for the fact that th that assumes that the mode is coming, you know, directly into the middle of the cavity and that they're longitudinally aligned. In reality, you know, our beam might be coming in like this or off to the side when the cavity is like a, if the cavity is a straight has this axis defined for its mode, we could be coming in like this, or, you know, 
Um, and that's why we need these two mirrors to give us some steering degrees of freedom. Okay, so we can actually manipulate the alignment of the incoming beam. So that's what we call it uh, in optics. It's called the alignment of the cavity. You know, if you've got good alignment, it means that you've aligned your input beam to the cavity axis. Okay, so you need to always, you know, allow enough distance between this lens and the cavity mode to actually fit in these two mirrors and the input. Um, the inputs mirror for the cavity, which is you know it's one of the cavity mirrors, the input mirror, input mirror, in mirror. Um, so let's see how I've got them now. How much space do I have left? This mount doesn't have a screw. I don't know where that went. Right there. So it's a good idea to um, try and get rid of any deflection of the beam, vertical deflection anyway, to begin with. So I can see that the beam has dropped from here to here by about a centimeter. So I can adjust the vertical tilts to try and mitigate that. You know, just to get it roughly right before I try and align it. it makes my work easier down, down the track. Um, so this cavity has its axis at about 9... 9.2 or 92 millimetres. So I should bring this down a bit to about 92. Um, but the first thing I better check is whether it's going to get to the right spot. So to the cavity's axis, can measure about one twenty-eight, and that was what was that? Sixty-five, one twenty-eight. So then, if I had my mirror about here, I've got, then I come down towards the cavity, and I've calculated the distance to the input mirror. Um, which, given the cavity has to be 150 millimeters long, would be approximately here. So I think, and I need to cover about 140, so this has got to come down. So let's just...
So you know, obviously this alignment is not going to be perfect. All my distances I'm measuring with a ruler. I don't know exactly where, at what depth this beam hits the mirror. So it's better if you, you know, if you're doing an, an experiment and you really want the alignment, it's going to be very sensitive. Our one won't be that sensitive to alignment. It's been designed not to be. But sometimes you really want to take care of it. So you, you know, I'll clip this beam with a ruler. Right, so now I've got this edge which tells me exactly the, um, this kind of degree of where the beam is and then I can mark that here and then measure from a point on the table to another point. I'm not doing that because I'm being lazy, but I would have probably told you to do it if you, if you were doing it. So that's where I need my input mirror. Now I'll make sure the cavity length is about right. It's going to come to about here. So I'm out by about 10 millimeters because I, I need to align it with the holes so I don't have um, infinite um, freedom there when deciding where to put this. So if I put it there, it needs to be here. needs to be about or shorter but this is probably too short. Shorter cavity is better. Um, the beam will tend to refocus um, at a smaller waist size um, which means that you're not coupling ideally to the mode because the waist is the wrong size but if you make it too long by mistake then your beam doesn't refocus at all, even to a smaller waist. Um, so, better short than too, too short than too long is essentially the message. That's just a practical thing to remember. But this is very much too short. So if I move across one, I can actually adjust this. I might just do that. I think that's a better idea. So I need to bring this about a centimeter forward. I can do that by adjusting the underneath. Just be very careful because there is a mirror in there. I'm out by about two, two millimeters short, but I'm on the short side, so I'm, I tend to be happy with that. Alright, 
All right. So that's going to be my cavity position. And now I'm going to fix everything and start the alignment. So I'll, I'll stop the video there and then continue it afterwards.